Hello everyone and welcome back to the series where I talk about myself and my life in music. Today I'm going to be discussing musical things I wish I figured out sooner. I'll talk about some broader things as well as some specific stuff on guitar. The first thing I wish I figured out sooner was how many really good guitar players there actually are out there. I grew up in a city of about 700,000 people or so called Winnipeg. And despite the fact that a lot of great guitar players have come from this city, it's not a music town in the sense that New York, LA, or even Toronto is not even close. I also didn't grow up in musical circles, so when I started getting decent at guitar, I had an inaccurate view of my skills. At first, I was the best in my group of friends, and then the best in my grade, and then the best in my school, and at this point, I started thinking I was hot soup, even though in the grand scheme of things, that meant absolutely nothing. When I went out to school for music in Toronto, I had a very eye-opening experience. I was one of 50 or so guitarists in my year, and all of them were really, really good. I started doing some math and realized this meant there were probably a couple hundred really good guitar players at the school, thousands of excellent guitar players in Toronto, tens of thousands in Canada, hundreds of thousands, if not millions in the world. I realized very quickly the musicians who taught at my school were probably on a level that I would never reach. And if these guys were playing small local shows around Toronto, how would someone like me who would never get to their level have any hope making a career in music? I think a lot of music students, when faced with this fact, go one of two ways. They either get discouraged and drop out, or they use it as motivation to get as good as they possibly can. This is what I tried to do, and it also got me thinking about what I can do different to set myself aside from the pack. I won't lie though, there were days where this really discouraged me and got to my head. I wish I'd figured it out before music school, so it wasn't such a huge shock to my ego, and also so I could have used it to motivate myself in my youth. If I'd known how many great guitarists there really are out there, I think my competitive nature would have kicked in earlier, and I probably would have been more efficient with my practice time when I was younger. If this were the case, I probably would have been a better musician now. And if I was thinking about how to do things differently earlier on, I probably would have started YouTube earlier, which brings me to my next point. I wish I figured out the YouTube video economy earlier. I'm not saying I necessarily wish I started YouTubing earlier, though that would have been nice, but rather how to do it most efficiently. Let me explain. When I first started doing this, I was aiming for the big viral video with millions of views because I'd seen others launch their careers through similar means. And if you look back at my first year of making videos, they're all some sort of wacky cover with a unique twist. I figured if I could just get a video to the top of Reddit, I would have it made in the shade. Now, if this were 2007, in the early days of YouTube, the kind of content I was creating would have made tons of sense. But I think shortly before I started, the viral video phenomenon died or at least changed. We as society became desensitized to those clickbaity, awe-inspiring videos. Gone were the days of some guy in his basement getting 100 million views. So many creators were chasing that carrot that the market got flooded and it became less impressive to see someone perform some wacky musical gimmick. Instead, audiences were looking for a personal connection with the creator. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm glad I made those videos that I made back then, but I also wish I was doing stuff like this where I just sit here and talk to you. This stuff is very enjoyable and it's also way easier to make. Back in the day, I might spend a month on one video alone, and when it didn't perform well, I would get really, really down and discouraged. An example of this would be the musical time lapse that I shot over the course of an entire year. That video has a fraction of the views that many of my other videos have, but it took so much more effort. If I had been putting out other regular content at the time, I wouldn't have been so emotionally invested in one single thing. But again, I was chasing something that would have made sense three years prior. Next up is I wish I discovered a nail file sooner. As ridiculous as that sounds, this little thing changed my life about two months ago. Ever since I started playing guitar, the nails on my middle finger and ring finger of my fretting hand have given me issues. Anytime I would cut my nails and then go to bend a string, they would get ripped back a bit from my finger, which is horribly painful. If this didn't happen, it probably meant my nail was too long, making it very annoying to play. I could never find that happy medium. I don't know if other guitar players have struggled with this as much as I have, but for me, it was a big thing. So recently, I decided to start filing those two nails instead of cutting them. Haven't had a problem since. Really wish I figured that one out sooner. On a similar note, I had lingering wrist pain for years that slowly got worse and worse and worse until I finally decided to go see a doctor. Now, when it comes to this type of stuff, I usually assume the worst. So when I went into his office, I was thinking that I would probably need to take months off guitar in order to get surgery and rehab it. He prescribed me with a cream to decrease inflammation in my tendon sheath and it was all cleared up within a couple days. Now and then, if I get a flare up, it's an easy fix. My advice, if you are having health issues, go see your doctor. A sports doctor worked for me. He'd seen the same issue in a bunch of different violin players and knew the answer right away. The whole ordeal only cost a couple 
whole box for the ointment, and I wish I did it way sooner. And you probably shouldn't listen to other guitar players when it comes to health stuff. They'll throw around terms like carpal tunnel and arthritis without actually really understanding them. Next, I wish I figured out how to practice efficiently earlier on. I'd played a lot of guitar in my younger days, but it wasn't until the year leading up to my time in college that I figured out how to actively improve. I did make a video on this subject, I'll link to it in the description, and I won't spend too much time on it. The basic concept is very simple, but putting it into action takes a fair bit of discipline. Focus on the things that are holding you back and conquer them in manageable chunks. Again, if you want to learn more on this, link in the description. I also started thinking about how to play notes a little later than I would have liked to. I spent a lot of time thinking about which notes I should play, but it wasn't until I watched one of those Eric Johnson Hot Licks videos when I started really thinking about how I was playing the notes. In that DVD, he talks about finding the sweet spot on a fret, muting the other strings, and how your pick is actually contacting the string. When I started thinking about this stuff, my playing took on a whole new dimension. For example, it sounds totally different if I play an A like this, than if I play an A like this. If you want to dive more into this, I've got a Sensei series on the subject, I'll link to it in the description. The last thing I'll mention for today is it took me way too long to figure out how to do those quick Stevie Ray Vaughan-esque note bursts, especially considering he's one of my favorite guitar players. Let me show you what I mean, pay specific attention to the last lick I play here. You know, that whole type of thing. I would always love when Stevie would interject that kind of stuff, but whenever I would try it, my timing would totally fall apart. My problem was, my system was just to play as many notes as possible in a beat or two without any real rhyme or reason. I eventually figured out that he's usually just playing nine notes or non-tuplets in a beat, but this was very unnatural for me. So what I would do is come up with a nice symmetrical easy 10 note run like this one. All I'm doing here is playing the 13th, 12th fret, 10th fret on first my E string, then B string, then G string, and then ending on the 12th fret of the D string. I would then play that with the metronome so that my first nine notes are the non-tuplet fitting in one beat, and my last note is the quarter note. I'd repeat that over and over and it would sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or maybe I'd do the non-tuplets twice like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Not having to think about my fretting hand allowed me to focus on the rhythm getting that beat inside my head. Repeating that over and over again and making sure that those notes were falling into their respective rhythmic places allowed me to start changing up what my left hand was doing, incorporating some more bluesy notes. <laughs> I had to figure this out from a theoretical, systematic standpoint to get this stuff working. To think I was playing these fast runs so drastically out of time is not a nice thought to think back on. That about wraps it up. I try not to lose too much sleep over regrets. Whatever I did or didn't do in the past led me to where I am now. You can't change what's already happened, but it's important to be doing self-reflection to make sure you have as few regrets as possible in the future. Thank you all for watching. I've got shirts like the one I'm wearing today with the samurai guitar playing silhouette and the words samurai guitarist underneath and Japanese characters over www.shopsamuraiguitarist.com. There's a variety of styles, different designs, all sorts of colors, and they ship all around the world. As always, a big thank you to everyone who supports my channel through Patreon. If you want to see another video like this one, hit that link up there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. I'm Samurai Guitarist. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you again soon.